Today I'm out here at a impact range on a on a gun range, and we're going to pull up some lead and see how much lead we can pull out of here with just some screens. Going for the large bullets mostly. Might be some two two threes in there. I got a quarter inch screen. I'll catch those and uh, see if we can't get some lead that's already been uh, alloyed to the proper consistency from bullets. So we're out here getting this lead. There's this little creek here. I came over to kind of look at it, see if it was any good for gold. It's seasonal only. And I saw all these little white specks in the bottom. And I suspected they might be lead. Lead shot, because there's a shotgun range up here too. So, pulled some out, and it was. But I want to show you what else we're finding in here. It'll be right there at the end of the shovel. There's a large bullet right there. And there's a smaller one right there. So we're going to do our environmentally friendly good deed. While we're getting lead for ourselves, there's three bullets in there actually. Just pulled out three lead bullets out of the environment. So when the environmentalists say that miners are destroying the environment, you can remind them of how much toxic material we pull out. So we're here at the house, got the lead bullets that we dug up the other day at the range, added them to some other ones that we had from a previous trip, and this one gallon paint can, it's about a little over three quarters full, it's 25 pounds of bullets. See what we get out of that when we smelt it down. So the equipment we're going to be using, I've got a square muffin tin. I use that to pour my uh, ingots. A little bit of a, a little level to make sure it's level, and a couple of shims to make it level. When we get the lead melted and scrape off all the uh, bullet uh, casings, we'll flux the lead. We just use a piece of candle wax for that. A little metal can to drop the. Uh, Scuzzies off the top into a pair of leather gloves because they were just plain work gloves. I can't find my uh, insulated ones. Got a pot holder from the girlfriend's kitchen, a ladle, and a spoon. The spoon I use for just scraping it off. You'll see that the ladle's for pouring, and a Goodwill cast iron pot skillet. Now I'm going to use a uh, Coleman gasoline powered camp stove. Just use the one burner and that works just fine. I've got it filled up with fuel. We'll fire it up here in a minute and then uh, I'll do a fast forward on the uh, melting. I'll try and leave it all on there. Just run a fast forward so you can watch it what happens. Okay, so I can see that the lead's starting to melt in the bottom. I used a spoon, moved it around. You can see the lead's just starting to melt. So we're going to shut the camera off, bring it in for a tighter shot so you can look down over it.
Okay, so we're getting it down. Got quite a bit of it out of here now. As you can see, everything's floating on the top. You bring a little bit of a spoon over here and you just kind of shake it like that with the spoon up on a high angle and the lead will all run out. It might be a little bit trapped in some of those bullet casings. And so because of that, after this is done, I'll uh, go back through them all and pull out the ones that still have lead in them. But the object is to try and get most of it out right now at this step. So that most of this is just casings and steel core. If it's a steel core bullet, there'd be a steel core floating on top of here. The rocks, the dirt. Some of these bullets may be full metal jacket and the lead won't come out of those because the temperature is not high enough to melt the copper. So the lead that's contained inside the full metal jacket, if it wasn't penetrated when it hit the uh, impact range, it won't come out of that jacket. And those bullets will smash or cut. They'll go into the next batch of uh, bullets to be melted down in the future. At this point, it's just a matter of getting all this crud off of the top here. You can see that dirt is just floating there. There's a lot of it down, stuck down below. You scrape the pan. Now I'm going to put a little bit of wax in there. And we'll flame up. Stir it in. That creates a carbon source for more impurities to attach to. And if this lead was going to be used to pour bullets right now, we'd want to flux it quite a few times. But because we're just making rough ingots at the moment, once or twice is, is fine. Okay, so now I'm going to try and level up my ingot mold here. Nice and level, both directions. As you can see, even though we we uh, fluxed it, you can see that powder. I don't know if it shows up on the camera. This powder. It didn't. We didn't flux out. If we were wanting to make the bullets. We'd want to flux it better to get the rest of that out of there. Okay, so we have melted down all the uh, lead skimmed off all the impurities or most of the impurities. Now we've got nine, eight, and a little almost nine little ingots in my muffin tins. Next step as they've cooled a bit is to dump them out onto the uh, concrete, let them cool. And it's going to be a little heavy. Got it. Got it. Mm -hmm. That's all there is to it. Let them sit there and cool, come back, pick them up, 
pick up any little pieces of lead. We don't want lead going out into the environment. We just spent all this time getting it out of there. So I've got uh, nine more ingots to add to my collection. I've got 37 pounds so far. This is probably a pound and a half to two pounds of ingot, and I got nine of them. So another 15 to 19 pounds of uh, lead probably. 